Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice Olympiad problem from Samara Math Olympiads. I forgot to write it down here in this PDF, but uh, I'll probably mention it in the uh, comment section or I don't know. Anyways, we've done a problem before Samara Math Olympiads before. Samara is a city in Russia and they have beautiful problems. Anyways, so this is a very interesting problem and it probably appeared in one of these years, maybe 1995, 1996 or 1997. You get the pattern? It's a really well-constructed, beautiful problem. I, I'd like to call it gorgeous. I mean, it's beautiful. Amazing. Anyways, now, how do you solve a problem like this? First of all, this is a polynomial equation, right? X to the power some very high power plus uh, 1996x equals 1997. It has how many solutions? This many solutions, whatever that number is, right? Are you going to be looking for all the solutions? Well, here's the thing. The, what's that theorem called? I forgot. Fundamental theorem of algebra, maybe? If you have an nth power polynomial or nth degree, it's supposed to have n complex roots. Complex roots obviously include real roots, right? But that doesn't mean all the roots are going to be distinct because sometimes we may have repeated roots. Think about x minus 1 to the 7th power equals 0. This is a heptic, septic, 7th degree polynomial, but it only has one root because all the roots are identical. Make sense? Okay. So we have a similar scenario here. Uh-oh. Pretend you haven't seen that. Uh, but here's the thing. How do you find all the solutions if there are this many solutions, even though some of them might be coinciding or whatever, repeating? Well, here's the thing. This is a special type of equation. First of all, when you see an only part problem, you should think there's something tricky about this. If I can get that, I can solve this problem. You know, most of the problem on this channel are of that type. Anyways, so here's the trick. 19 is an odd number. Well, you knew that, right? What about 19 to the power 95? That's an odd number too. Because if you take an odd number, multiply by itself, keep multiplying, you'll always get an odd number. So 19 to the power 95 is odd. So what difference does it make? Well, let's go ahead and replace it with 2n plus 1 since that's odd number. So we're going to get something like this. x to the power 2n plus 1 plus 1996x equals 1997. Now, I want to do the following. Solving an equation usually means we have two curves and we're looking at the intersection points, right? How many intersection points are there? We don't know. Let's find out. So if you go ahead and call this f of x, and if you call this g of x, f of x and g of x have however many intersection points, each intersection point will be a solution in terms of x. x equals something, right? Will be a solution. Cool. So we have to solve f of x equals g of x, but... To be able to solve it, I want to look at the behavior of this function. Can you graph this function? Yes, but the graph is probably going to look weird, probably almost like a vertical line, because x values are just going to shoot up like crazy. Imagine raising 2 to the power of that number. It's going to be huge. What about 1 half? Ooh, that's going to be super duper small, right? So we're going to be close to 0 for a while, and then our graph is just going to go crazy upward, right? So. But here's what we're going to do. First, rec recall what we called f of x. It's right there, come on, <laughs> right? And then differentiate it. Why? I'll show you why in a little bit. When I differentiate it, I get 2n plus 1 multiplied by x to the power 2n plus 1996. Great. And then set this equal to 0. You know why? Because I want to find the critical points where the graph has a maxima, minima, inflection point, whatever, because if our graph is kind of curving like this, it's probably going to have a lot of intersection points, right? And I'm talking about the x-axis, but you can kind of adapt it to any vertical line, because this is a vertical line, right? Come on. So it's a constant function. Well, here's the thing. This equation has no real solutions. Why? Because this x to the power 2n is even, and 2n plus 1 is odd. Doesn't, that doesn't matter. But this is positive. Remember, n is greater than 0. So uh, you add a positive number to another positive number, you can never get 0. So no solution to f prime, which means this graph has no critical points. What does that mean? In other words, 
it's either always increasing or always decreasing. How can we tell? Well, look at the derivative. F prime is always positive, which means f of x is increasing. If f prime is positive on an interval, f is increasing because that means that any tangent line you draw to the graph will have positive slope. And first derivative gives you the slope of the tangent line. Make sense? But this is always true. So f of x is always increasing. What does that mean? It means a vertical line can only intersect f at one point, which means there is only one solution. I know I kind of spent about five, six minutes on just this, but very important concept. You ne really need to understand the first derivative tells you sine wise plus, uh, plus minus, tells you whether the function is decreasing or increasing. At points which f prime is zero, you get a maximum or minimum. Most of the time you get a horizontal tangent. We don't have that. It's always increasing. Make sense? Okay, fine. We get it. There's only one solution, but what is that solution? Okay, let's take a look. Let's go back to the original problem. And remember, this problem was constructed around those years, right? Now take a look. Can I guess and check the solution? That would be awesome. You know why? Because I know this equation has only one solution. If I can guess that, I'm done, right? Isn't that cool? And yes, you can guess it because you know what? x equals 1 works. And the reason behind that is if you look at the sum of the coefficients of this polynomial, well, let me write it as a polynomial first, like this, make it a full polynomial, and you're going to realize, hopefully, I've been telling you so many times, right, that check the sum of the coefficients all the time. 1 plus 1,996 minus 1,997 is equal to 0, which means x equals 1 is a solution, which means x equals 1 is the only solution, right? And we got it. Well, thanks to people who wrote this problem for Samara Math Olympiads, and I'm going to be doing uh, other problems uh, from that same book, which I couldn't get a hold of. But anyways, I found some problems. They're just amazing, beautiful. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. By the way, I just want to tell you, on my other channel, which is A plus PI, I made a video, an exponential equation I really, really love. I hope you share the same sentiment. Please let me know. Check it out. Like I said earlier, I have another channel, Shameless Self-Promotion, A plus PI, which I talk about basics of complex numbers. Anyways, go check it out and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye-bye.